you can probably tell from the background and from the sound, it's a windy night and surprisingly not as cold as I remember it. According to the weather app, it's only 9 degrees and that's not too cold. Well, it's still cold but not too cold, not like the, the sub 5 degrees that we were getting last past few weeks. And again, there are plants in front of me but wait, these are from last week. And yes, as you know, we've been away on vacation for the past few days, so I haven't had the chance to move them out to the open. So as you can imagine, these plants have been sitting here for the past several days, and I need to move them out somewhere more exposed, somewhere they could get more sun. So maybe I should do that now. By now you're probably thinking, what? A recap without new plants? I won't disappoint. Tada! These are new plants that I got from Gloria, Gloria Ninotti. I recently visited her house and she graciously gave me some cuttings, even if I didn't ask for any. And she gave me quite a lot, man. So thank you so much Gloria, I'll make it up to you someday. I just need to grow out some of my propagations and I'll send them off to you. Unfortunately it's too windy outside, the audio is suffering and if I stay here much longer it would be too cold for me so I'll do the unboxing indoors. Alright, time to unbox. Again, thank you so much Gloria. It was my son's birthday but I think I got more presents than him on that day. Anyway, on to the comments. Now we can finally start with the comments. First off is this week's episode, episode 74, and that's the June Garden Tour. So this episode came out last Tuesday and the entire family was out on the vacation. Which explains why it took me quite a while before I started getting back to the comments. Because I only started responding to them a few hours ago. So first one is from Venice Chambers. I'm from Jamaica and I really enjoy your videos. Your plants are very beautiful. I don't find much succulents here. It's a plant that's not yet well known to us. Wish there's a way to get some. I love plants and you really inspired me. You know, I find it really interesting knowing what's available and what's not around the world. And I'm quite surprised that in Jamaica, you don't have that much selection. Because I would imagine that there might there might be a decent yeah there might be a decent variety there especially since you're near Mexico I guess that's if my memory serves me right yes you're off the coast somewhere due east of Mexico so I would imagine that you would have all sorts of echeverias you know but I'm wrong <laughs> so that's weird from ASC do you ship to the US? Because I will ask my parents if they can buy me plants from you. Also, the project is coming along nicely. Unfortunately, I can only send to select parts of Australia. And apologies for that. From Isa Sidlowska, Chuck, 
Plants are looking beautiful as always. So regarding Echeveris, I'm surprised they are flowering and popping during your winter season. I thought they would only do that in spring. Actually, the thing is they would start flowering after a period of dormancy and, and as you know, Echeveris are dormant in winter, so they would start flowering in spring. But there's also this semi pseudo dormancy during the heat of winter. So that means that after the after the after the peak of the summer season, which is usually towards the end of summer or near the end of summer, that's when plants would wake up again. That's when the echeverias would wake up again and this triggers the flowering effect. So in countries like ours that have temperate climates and have a well-defined four seasons, these plants would flower at least twice a year because of those the two dormant states, dormant periods. So they're mainly dormant in winter, so expect so you could expect a whole lot of flowers in spring. And they get semi-dormant during the the peak of the summer heat. And right after that, they would start flowering again. This ones, the ones that you see right now, are on the tail end of the flowering. They they started late, and that explains a bit about that. From Leslie Solway Boyd, I wish I lived in Melbourne. <laughs> Do you ship to Canada? Like I mentioned a while ago, unfortunately I can't because I'm using Australia Post and I'd rather not deal with all of those bio biosecurity and all of the forms and stuff, you know, the permits, import permits, export permits, especially since I'm just doing this as a hobby and I won't be able to and I can't ensure that I'm going to pack the plants properly you know and I can't ensure that they would arrive safely in your destination especially if they're going to be staying they're going to be in transit for more than a week and besides how would you feel if the plants arrived looking very sad looking a bit ugly you wouldn't be happy at me and I I'd end up having angry customers you know so I'd rather deal with locals or national within Australia at least the plants arrive fast and there's no customs to think about from Kim Taute Toti <laughs> sorry I don't know how to pronounce her name where do you get your where do you get where did you get the pots in your garden from so I featured some of them in my previous episodes most of them I gather from local a lot of them I gather from local markets, weekend markets. Some of them I buy from nurseries or garden centers. And some from those who from centers who specialize in pots. So it depends on I so it really depends on how much I intend to spend and the types of pots that I'm after because each because each seller has a different uh, they have a different selection so it, it's worth coming visiting them once in a while every regularly I guess so yeah I, I've got lots of sources for them and I rotate and I do a rotation among them because every time I visit and assuming that I give it a bit of time there would always be something new so it's like a present you know from in him I was saying penta 7 before but brain fart you have seven sevens in your name so it's sexta 7 so from in him sexta 7 Winter propagation is a great idea. Even though it's summer where I am, I was just wondering today about which plants are winter growers and if they propagate well then. And it was nice to hear you mention the seed sowing. I'm going to keep on you for that. <laughs> yeah, um, 
I'm pretty sure you've seen this little uh, dormancy chart and it tells you which ones are active in summer and which ones are active in winter. So I use that as a general guide and I just verify with my plants. So I, I've had my plants for about two years so I can, I can, uh, I can cross check. You know, look just so I can cross check just by looking at them and seeing how fast they grow through the seasons. And yes, I could verify that echeverias are mostly active during the, the warmer months. Aeoniums are mostly active during the colder months. Um, Graptopetalums, sedums, pachyphytums, and the hybrids between them, the intergeneric hybrids. They seem to be active more during the the middle seasons, you know, not too hot, not too cold. So, more or less, at least here in Melbourne, the, the, the they seem to align with the dormancy chart. It would, of course, it would not be the same in other countries where they have where they are much closer to the equator, and they're not having a temperate climate, you know. So take that chart with a grain of salt. From Kathy Gilbreth. Oh, he's so cute. He's talking so good. The aeoniums are looking good along with everything else. Enjoy the videos always. Yes, I think that's the effect of turning three years old, you know. <laughs> Things are starting to get more clear. And I'm pretty sure it's going to talk our ears out in no time. From Alex Curtis. Beautiful jade in flower. For me, the key to jades is exposing the trunk so they look like small trees. Give it a nice pot and expose them. Everything looks great though, man. So close to 5k subs. As of as of his comment, as of when he posted the comment, I was really close to 5k and obviously, as you know by now, we just hit over 5k subscribers. Yay! And about the jade. Thank you for the tip. I'm going to see if I could clean it up, trim it up, just to expose some of the trunk. Because I agree with you, I really don't like the look of uh, a huge crassula of a bush. You know, it just looks messy to me. There's leaves everywhere, no structure. But if, but with some grooming, I guess it would probably look good. So we'll see. From Siani the Greatest. Watch this while in my school here in Manila, Philippines. And in Tagalog, he's telling me that he is attending a Catholic school and phones, smartphones are prohibited. So he would watch it during his free time while hiding. <laughs> Can you consider me as your number one fan? <laughs> Don't get caught, man. I need your views. <laughs> From Alonia J, I have a huge amount of pups growing. I am going to be in Melbourne in mid-July. If your Starburst has pups, even next year, I am interested in purchasing one. Wow. If you mean the Aeonium Starburst, I have a, I have several cuttings which I separated a few months back. I think sometime during autumn. Well, it's, it was in one of the previous episodes. Yes, if let me know. Uh, maybe send drop me a message here or on my Facebook. From Zanizana66. As usual, Zaki steals the show. You have so many plants and interesting plants for them. I hope the frosts don't damage your succulents much over winter and the atomaceous earth works for you. I bought some and I haven't noticed many ants around. I also used ant sand. I'm trying everything. The trouble with the DE is that it looks ugly on the plants. Hmm, interesting. About the frost, I'm lucky so far that my plants aren't affected. I did I did a 
full sweep, well not full, but I went on a little stroll around the garden earlier today just checking if everything's alright. They seem fine. And thanks thanks for the note about the ant sand. I might try that. From Tomas Mones Cazon. That's awesome what the Echeveres are doing. Adaptation. Great video, Chuck. I'm learning a lot just by watching. Thanks again, mate. And bye camera. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that it's coincidental, you know, but it's they're mainly reacting to the reduced amount of sunlight that they're getting because our days are much shorter now. But even so, they are getting they're still fully exposed and they're getting lots of sunlight, so it's really good that they're trying to funnel funnel the water away, or drive the water away. Because it helps me keep them happy, you know? No overwatering. From Given to Grow, good luck with the battle with melees. My opponent this year is Spider Mites. I thought it was contained to one room, but it's also on one side of my balcony, so that's fun. Oh, wow. Yeah, spray bottle, okay. <laughs> In your room? From Lisette Wonder Woman, everything is looking amazing and your son is adorable. Thank you, Lisette. From Vegged Out, just beautiful man. Those jade flowers are amazing. I knew you'd like it. From Muna Nabankema, what a collection. Zach is so, so cute. Thank you so much. From Treasures of Plants, looks beautiful. What's the oldest Echeveria you have? They are very large. That's a great question and it's probably either the curls or the red sails because when I got them about December 2016, they were already a bit big. They were, they were not fully mature yet but they were quite big so I guess at that time they were over one year old, maybe one, one to two years old and two years have passed since then which means that they're now more or less four or five years. Hmm. And a follow up, I have a magic red and I think it's my oldest and it's a monster. <laughs> it grows very fast. Are you from the north of California? I'm from Melbourne, Australia, the other part of the world. And now, we're going to look at the comments on the milestone video. There's quite a lot of comments to go through here, so I'm just going to acknowledge all of you by your name. So, big thanks to Monolock, Brad Miller, Alex Curtis, Treasures of Plants, Waltboro Hoops, Given to Grow, Succulent Living by Maria, Sharon Spaniel, Kathy Gilbreth, Isa Zidlauska, Claudia Morel Ruiz, Retro, Retro Ray Succulents, and Linda Leal. Thank you so much for the congratulatory messages. And thank you so much for your support because without this, this is so cheesy, but without you, Series Capades would not be a success. So I'm really glad that we have built this community and and although my videos are not meant to be how-to's or instructional because there's already a lot and I'm going to leave that to my fellow succulent YouTubers because they have a lot of expertise in their fields. In my case, I just like vlogging, I like sharing what I'm doing and the learning experience just comes out naturally from that. I find that it is a lot more fun for me to create videos about me working on stuff rather than creating a series of lectures because I guess it's just how most people learn, you know? A lot of people learn a lot by practice, by watching others do it, rather than reading instructions or stuff like that. So I guess I'm catering to those who are very visual. And of course, all of these comes with a caveat. It might seem that I'm an expert, but to be honest, I only started this two years ago and I've been Although I've been reading a lot, I've been researching a lot, but most of this stuff is from my experience. I do try to adapt my experience to, to various factors like your climate, the types of plants that's available, you know. It's, there's a lot of factors, a lot of variables involved. 
So although you find that I may come up with useful advice, practical advice, don't just run with it. Gather second opinion, third opinion or so. You know, do your research. You could also do your own research, cross-check with what others are saying, and do your own experimentation. That way you can verify that what I'm saying is true or not. I do try to make sure that everything I share in my videos are correct. But of course, some of these involve assumptions. So I do try to catch myself and make sure that I give a disclaimer, you know, saying that I haven't tried it yet or I'm going to try it or someone told me this or someone told me that. So just make sure to watch out for that. And of course, if you're unsure with something, it doesn't hurt to check other sources and experiment yourself. And that's what I would always do. Of course, with lots of experimentation, it also translates to lots of failures. You're not going to get everything correct the first time. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's what I do, you know? And you're lucky that I'm doing this on camera because if I make mistakes, you can learn from my mistakes. And it's, and it's on public record. <laughs> anyway, again, thank you so much for listening to me just rambling along again. Despite the very fun, warm, and short vacation that we had, it's really nice to be back home because there's no place like home. I'm pretty sure you feel the same. And that wraps up this recap. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to watch episode 74, the end of June garden tour. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell just to be sure that you will be notified of future episodes. And if you're new to Saris Cafes, I produce two videos every week. One will be Thursday morning my time and that's my vlog episode of the week. And another at Saturday evening my time and that's for the recap video of that episode. Sometimes I come up with random videos in between. And if you've been following Saris Cafes for a long time, you would know that I, especially back in winter, no, especially back in summer, I had lots of videos every week. There were times that I would have four or five videos every week. And that's mainly because the day is longer. You know, sunrise, sunrise is early, the sun sets really late. So there's a lot of time for me to play around in the garden. But now it's winter, the days are really short and I only can manage two episodes every week. Oh, and make sure to check out my Facebook and Instagram, Seriscapades. I post an Echeveria photo and trivia every single day. It's under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. You could also check out my website, and that's a good way to contact me if you can't get a hold of me on YouTube. See you on Tuesday for the next episode. Bye.